Hello dear children welcome to Sony ma'am's class bringing forth before you a beautiful poem a thing of beauty written by John Keats in previous video you have learned about the poet introduction tone and style of the poem annotations that is line wise explanation in this module you are going to learn about the theme central idea and conclusion with poetic devices of the poem before going into the theme of the poem let's do some warming up every day we find the newspaper laden with scary and creepy news stories and we wonder why has human been become so aggressive so hostile so brutal and when we look around us we find that we are surrounded by the colossal massive multi story building in the midst of maddening crowd far far away from the cozy lap of nature do you know from where this hostility and aggressiveness come from this behavioral disorder is the result of being away from nature from our source from our origin our mother earth today we have a disorder which is called nature deficit disorder a child suffers from this disorder is a result of child's obsession with gadgets and internet and of losing complete touch with nature so children stimulate your mental imaginative abilities to dive into the beauty of nature and mysteries of nature with john keats in the poem a thing of beauty now let's look to the theme the very opening line of the poem a thing of beauty openly conveys the theme of the poem that a thing of beauty is a joy forever The poem magnifies the power of innumerable natural objects full of beauty. It tells about how beautiful objects of nature mesmerize us as they are the source forever and thus take away all the sorrow and suffering that surround us from time to time. The poet urges mankind to realize the transformational therapeutic and spiritual impact of beauty and make his life enjoyable and worth living beauty is a magical drink that has the ability to transform lives thoughts and health life without beautiful things would certainly become very hard central idea the poem a thing of beauty from john keats poem antimian is usually read as a straightforward assertion which has the central idea that any beautiful thing gives unending pleasure this idea can be interpreted in several diverse senses for the reason that human being share the same basic natures and respond to the same motivations in the same basic ways a thing of beauty even if lost for a time perhaps even for centuries will still have the ability to give joy to future generations if it is experienced again later a beautiful thing is happiness forever whatever happens we cannot hate a really beautiful thing let's move to the conclusion 
The poem concludes by saying that beautiful things are figuratively an endless source of nectar that pours down to us from heaven, bringing eternal joy for the soul's grandeur. They are like a medicine of life, a never diminishing source of pleasure and delight, a boundless source of joy that seems to be a precious gift from heaven. It will give joy throughout one's lifetime. One can return to the beautiful thing and never finish finding it a source of joy. Even after one dies, it will continue to exist and will give joy to people of the next age group. Now, let's learn poetic devices. Many poetic devices are used in this poem. The first one, imagery, which creates some scene or images. For example, flowery band, shady boon, grandeur of dooms, green world, daffodils, cooling covert, clear rills, sprinkling fair musk rose, pouring from heaven's brim. Second example, metaphor, implied comparison. For example, bower quiet, fountain of immortal drink, wreathing flowery band, grandeur of the dooms of mighty dead, moves away the pal, things of beauty. Third example, anaphora, which means repeated words in successive lines. For example, of despondence of noble nature, of all the unhealthy, of inhuman dearth, of gloomy days. Here, repetition of of is there. Next example, alliteration. Repetition of same consonant letter sound in the same line. For example, noble nature, cooling coward, ban to bind. Sleep sweet. Here, in every line, first line and sound alliteration. Next line, C sound alliteration. Next, B sound. And the last, S sound. Next poetic device is symbol. Represent ideas or qualities. For example, simple sheep for innocence. Refers to mankind as Christ's shepherd who leads human souls out of the dark world of sins and temptation. Next poetic device is transferred epithet, which means an adjective which transfers quality to the noun. For example, gloomy days, unhealthy and over darkened ways. Next poetic device is oxymoron which means opposite words used together. For example, mighty dead. Next poetic device is inversion or anastrophe, which means a technique in which order of words is reversed for particular effect. For example, are we reading a flowery band? So dear children, here the poem ends. I hope you all will like and understand the poem properly. Take care. Thank you very much.